Okay, let's look at 7.4 and find some zeros of polynomials. All right, write the complete factored form. Okay, the complete factored form is f of x equals a sub n times x minus c1 or cn x minus cn minus 1, you know, and on and on and on. Okay, so we have to find all the linear factors on this. Okay, that's the completely factored form, and this is what we may not have done before. All right, so we want the complete factored form given that x minus 4 is a 0. Okay, so if, if we have a 0, then we have a factor that goes along with it. So a 0 is x equals negative 4. The factor is x plus 4. Okay, so that's one of our factors, and that's a linear factor. So what are we going to do? We are, if we know this is a 0, if we divide by negative 4, that will give us a remainder of 0, and then we can take the polynomial that's left and do something with it. Okay, so I'm going to start out by dividing by negative 4. I've got 3, 2, 1, 0, so I've got all of my representatives here, so I have negative 4, negative 1, 51, negative 36, and I bring that down, that gives me negative 4, a positive 16, 15, negative 60, negative 9, 36, and 0. Okay, so now I have to factor this or find solutions here. So if I write this out, this becomes negative 4x squared plus 15x minus 9 is equal to 0. Okay, uh, it looks like this can be factored, so let's just go ahead and factor it and see what happens. So from here, I of course am going to multiply this and then use that to split the middle term. So I'm looking for numbers whose product is 36 and whose sum is 15, they are 12 and 3. So this becomes 12x plus 3x, and then we have our negative 4x squared and minus 9 equals 0. So it's all split up now, I can group. Uh, let's see, I will factor out a negative 4x, and I'm left with x minus 3 plus 3 times x minus 3 equals 0. So this tells me I have x minus 3 times negative 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. So I have factors now of x minus 3, and I have a factor of negative 4x plus 3. So my uh, factored form becomes f of x equals negative 4x plus 3 times x minus 3 times x plus 4. But this is where I have to go back now and look at my definition here. All of these factors have just x minus, or you know, this is what the problem is. So this actually is my a sub n, which means I just need to factor that out. So this actually becomes negative 4 times x minus 3 over 4. times x minus 3 times x plus 4. Now, I'm going to tell you, I would accept either one of these, but this is technically the complete factored form. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. All right, on number 8, it's asking us to factor it using the graph. Okay, well, what does the graph tell us? The graph tells us what our zeros are. 
and so from there I can find factors. So let's see what I've got here. I have a zero and a factor. So I have a zero of x equals negative 2, so that's a factor of x plus 2. But this has a multiplicity of 2. So I have another 0 at x equals negative 2, which means I have a factor of another factor of x plus 2. And I also have a 0 of x equals 4, which means I have a factor of x minus 4. This is a fourth degree polynomial, so really all I need is I need to know that value right there. Okie dokie. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide by x, minus, x equals negative 2. Then the result of that, I'm going to divide by negative 2. And then the result of that, I'm going to do it again. Okay, so I'm going to start out with, this will be my first step. So negative 2, and I'm going to divide that into negative 2, whoops, 3. 24, negative 4, and negative 48. All right, bring that down. That gives me 4, 7, negative 14, 10, negative 20, negative 24, 48, 0. Okay. So now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take negative 2. 7, 10, negative 24, and divide that by negative 2. So negative 2, 4, 11, negative 22, negative 12, 24, 0. Okay. So. Now, I'm going to take what's left and divide it by 4. Negative 2, 11, negative 12. So that gives me negative 2, negative 8, 3, 12, 0. Okay, so that tells me that my resulting polynomial is negative 2x plus 3. So I now have another factor of negative 2x plus 3. Now, of course, if it says completely factor, then I can also write this as negative 2 times x minus 3 halves. And that actually supports what's on the graph because it looks like my graph, my solution is between 1 and 2. So it looks like 3 halves would be a reasonable solution. Okay, so if my factored form now is going to be f of x is equal to negative 2 times x minus 3 halves times x minus 4 times x plus 2 times x plus 2, or you could write it as x plus 2 squared. It doesn't matter. Okie dokie. So let's see what. Use the given 0 to find all the zeros and write it as a product of linear factors. Okay, so I know if I have a 0 of x equals 2i, then I also have a 0 of x equals negative 2i. Now I'm going to do this two different ways, and you just have to make the decision of which one you like the best. All right, I'm going to start out by doing it with synthetic division. If I have a 0 of 2i, Then I can divide, let's see, 3, 2, 1, everything's in order, so that's 2, and I'm going to leave myself some room here. All 
Okay, so if I bring down the 2, 2 times 2i is 4i. When I add these together, I get 3 plus 4i. Now if I multiply that, if I have 2i times 3 plus 4i, that gives me 6i plus 8i squared, which is just negative 8 plus 6i. When I add those together, I get 6i. 2i times 6i gives me 12i squared, which is negative 12, and I have a 0. Okay, so now I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but I'm going to do it with my 0 of negative 2i. So if I have negative 2i into 2, 3 plus 4i, and 6i, Bring down the 2, that gives me negative 4i, that gives me 3, that gives me negative 6i, and I end up with a 0. <clears throat> so I'm left with a factor of 2x plus 3. Okay, so if I have a 0, of if so my f of x is equal to 2 plus 3i if I have a 0 at 2i then this is a factor of x minus 2i if I have a 0 at x equals negative 2i this is an x plus 2i Okay, now there is another way to do this. And what you can do is you can multiply it out. And I'm going to, I need some more room for that. Okay. So I know, so method two, if I have x equals 2i and x equals negative 2i, then I know that x minus 2i is 0 and x plus 2i equals 0. So I can multiply these. x minus 2i times x plus 2i equals 0. And this is a difference of squares, so this becomes x squared minus 2i squared, which is x squared minus 4i squared which is just x squared plus 4. I can now take this and divide using long division. Okay, so if I take x plus 4, and divide it into my original polynomial, which is 2x to the third plus 3x to the second plus 8x plus 12. x goes into 2x to the third, 2x times. I'm sorry, this is x squared, okay. So that gives me 2x to the third plus 8x. When I subtract, I'm left with 3x to the second. This also cancels out, plus 12. 3x to the second divided by x to the second is 3. When I multiply that, that becomes 3x to the second plus 12. And when I subtract, that gives me 0. So I get exactly the same thing. I have a factor of x minus 2i, x plus 2i, 
and 2x plus 3. So f of x is 2x plus 3, x minus 2i, x plus 2i. Either way you want to do it. All right, so let's now look at number 10. Okay, and 10, it says to write a polynomial in standard form with the lowest possible degree that has a leading coefficient of negative 2 and 0 is x equals 2 and x equals i plus 1. Okay, all right, so let's see what we're going to do to get started. I'm going to, I may need some extra room because I'm going to do it two different ways here. And the big deal is, is I want to write it in standard form. Standard form means that I have to write it, I have to multiply it all out. Okay, so what does it tell us? Standard form, it has a leading coefficient of negative 2, and it has zeros of x equals 2 and x equals 1 plus i. So what that tells me is if I have x equals 2, then I have a factor of x minus 2 equals 0. If I have a factor of x equals 1 plus i, then x minus 1 minus i equals 0 is a factor. If I have x equals 1 plus i, then it's conjugate x equals 1 minus i is also a factor. So this becomes x minus 1 plus i equals 0. And I have a leading coefficient of negative 2. Okay, so really what I've got here now is I know that f of x is equal to negative 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 1 minus i times x minus 1 plus i. Okay, so, hmm. So now I need to turn that into standard form. So I think what I'll do is I will tackle this part first. So let's see what I can do with this. All right, if I want to multiply these two, then I can technically multiply each of these out. And if that's easier for you, that's fine. But I'd like you to look at this. This actually can be written as, I can write this as x minus 1 minus i times x minus 1 plus i. So this is a difference of squares. So this becomes x minus 1 squared minus i squared. So x minus 1 squared is x squared minus 2x plus 1 and then minus i squared becomes minus negative 1. So this becomes x squared minus 2x plus 2. So now I have, and I'm going to go ahead and, and move this over here now. Now I have f of x is equal to negative 2 times x minus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 2. Okay, now I'm going to choose to do these this part next. All right, so if I do that, that just becomes x to the third 
minus 2x to the second plus 2x minus 2x to the second plus 4x minus 4. So this becomes x to the third minus 4x to the second plus 6x minus 4. So f of x equals negative 2 times this whole thing. So now to put it in standard form, it's just f of x is equal to negative 2x to the third plus 8x to the second minus 12x plus 8. Okay, let's see how many. I've got two more problems to do in this section. I think I'll go ahead and stop the video here.